Hello and welcome back to Calculus Tutorial. Uh, we are starting a new semester and we get to do everything we did first semester but backwards. Um, we studied derivatives, now we get to do anti-derivatives, the opposite of a derivative. Um, also sometimes called integration um, as well. So get ready for this roller coaster ride. We are doing everything backwards. Let's first try to wrap our mind around what an antiderivative actually is. So first semester we had our three graphs f, f prime, and f double prime. And we mostly worked our way this way. We kept taking derivatives. Well, this semester, we are going backwards. So if you start with the derivative, can you get back to the original function? So if we have an equation like f of x is equal to 3x squared. Well, the derivative would be 6x. And so what we're going to do is, if you're given the derivative of 6x, could you get back to the original function 3x squared? Uh, if I give you a slightly simpler one, If we have g of x is equal to 6x, that means g prime is equal to 6. So can we go backwards from there? And let's throw a trig function in there. Sine of x. And the derivative would be cosine of x. And so we're going to focus on how can we go backwards now. Well, first, we need some syntax. How are we going to write this? Um, and so an antiderivative, the way you write it, is kind of a big S, narrow S like that, is our antiderivative symbol. So if I take the antiderivative of 6x, and then we put a dx afterwards, um, it kind of a throwback to dy over dx, we got that dx down there. We are doing this with respect to x. Well, that is going to equal, if I go backwards, 3x squared. Now, there's a little bit more to it, sadly. Because what if, on my 3x squared, I added a 2? That would not change the derivative at all. So when I go backwards from 6x, that 2 might be there. And I wouldn't have seen it over here at all. Or it could have been an 8. That doesn't change the 6x. Or it could have been an 18. That does not change the 6x. And so when we take a derivative, we lose the constant. So when we take an antiderivative, we have to put it back. And so at the end, we put a plus C. It could be a 2, an 8, an 18. We don't know, so it's just plus C. And so that's going to be one thing that we have to remember. You always put a plus C after an antiderivative. So if we keep going, that means the antiderivative of 6 is going to be equal to 6x. But again, we also need that plus c. And the last one here, if we take the antiderivative of cosine of x, and we go backwards, that lands us on sine of x. And again, you need that plus c. Because there could have been a plus 2 at the end. That constant still would have disappeared when you took the derivative. 
So that's sort of our goal this semester, is looking at these antiderivatives. And there are some rules, shortcuts if you will, to help you do that. Um, and we're going to try to wrap our minds around now. All right. So antiderivatives, the act of taking an antiderivative is called integration. So there are some integration rules or antiderivative rules, if you will. A full list is on page 250, so you might want to take a look at that um, in a big green box but I've listed a few of the important ones here, but don't forget to take a look at page 250. So because we're going backwards, if you know an antiderivative rule, that means you know a derivative, I'm sorry, if you know a derivative rule, you know an antiderivative rule. So here's our derivative rule. If we take the derivative of a constant, it equals zero. Well, that means if I take the antiderivative of zero, I must get back to that constant. If I take the derivative of a constant times x, like 5x, you just get the constant. That means if I take the antiderivative of just a constant, that will give me kx, and then, as always, plus c. This gets a little weird with the power rule. For derivatives, the power rule was the n multiplies down, and then you subtract 1 from the power. It is almost the exact opposite for the antiderivative rule. So if I have x to the n, and I want to take the antiderivative, Instead of subtracting 1 from the power, we add 1 to the power. And instead of multiplying by n, we divide by n plus 1. That power, we divide by it. And of course, yes, it is a plus c. That one is weird, so let's look at it in practice. All right, What is the antiderivative of, let's make up something here, 4 um, x to the third. Okay, we're going to add 1 to the power, and then we still have that 4 from the middle, from the beginning, but then we're going to divide by this new power. So that the 4s cancel out, and we're just left with x to the 4th. Nice thing here is you can always check your answer by taking the derivative. What is the derivative of x to the 4th? 4x cubed. So it worked there. And yes, don't forget your plus c. All right, so there is the power rule. That is going to be sort of our bread and butter. This one we already did. Um, the derivative of sine is cosine, which means the antiderivative of cosine has to be sine plus c. And the derivative of cosine was negative sine. So that means the antiderivative, now here's, yes, you could put negative sign right here, but we don't really want the negative on this side. We want the negative on the other side. So I'm going to move the negative to the other side of the equation. So negative cosine plus c. And those are going to be the two hard things to remember because they are opposites. The negative relationship is switched. So here, when you take the derivative of sine, you get a positive. When you take the derivative of cosine, you get a negative. But now, because we're doing this backwards, when you take the antiderivative of cosine, you have a positive sign. And when you take the antiderivative of sine, 
you get the negative. So things are flipped. That's kind of hard to keep straight, and we are going to have to work hard at doing that. All right, now that we got some rules under our belt, let's try to actually take a few uh, antiderivatives. So let's get a couple examples done here. So first is all power rule. So when we take the antiderivative, we can of course do these three separately. So the x squared is going to become x to the third. And then I'm going to have to divide by the 3 and the 5 stays. Minus, all right, I'm just going to put the 3x there. But it was a power of 1, so now it's going to become a power of 2. And now I have to divide by that new power, divide by 2. Plus, if I take the antiderivative of 1, that becomes 1 x. That was just a straight interpretation of one of our rules, plus c. The nice thing about all these, if you take the derivative, you should be able to check your answer. So if I take the derivative, 3 multiplies down, cancels out the 3, and we get 5x squared. 2 multiplies down, cancels out the 2, and you get 3x. And the derivative of 1x is 1, the derivative of c is 0. All right, two more. Uh, this one is not a quotient rule. Good news, there is no quotient rule for this, uh, for antiderivatives. It's kind of good and bad news. Um, but we do need to rewrite this because we can't take the antiderivative the way it looks right now. And so we're simply going to take the x to the fourth and move it up by using a negative exponent. Now this is much easier to do. We just use the power rule one more time. So we're going to have one-third times um, x. Now we add 1 to the exponent. So be careful that is not going to be negative 5. It's going to be negative 3. We're all going to make that mistake. Don't worry. But then we have to divide by that exponent. So divide by negative 3 uh, plus c. And then you can rewrite this uh, one-third times the three on the bottom will be negative one-ninth x to the negative three. And it might look nice. Oh, don't forget to plus c. And it might look nicer if we put that back in the denominator. So nine x cubed like that. Looks a little nicer that way. But again, the calculus was right here. Everything else was algebra. All right, so now um, let's use the trig rule. We did a lot of power rule there. Um, we still have addition, so we're going to take this antiderivative and then this antiderivative. Uh, we might as well do that one right now. That's just going to be 3x. Get the easy stuff out of the way. Now, what is this going to be? The negative 2 is going to stay. The antiderivative sine is cosine. But remember, the positive negative relationship is switched. So now when I take the antiderivative of sine, it is actually a negative cosine. And so these two negatives happen to become positive this time plus c. Sorry, it's a little spaced out there, uh, but the math is still good. All right, so kind of a crash course there in antiderivatives. As we practice this, you will get better and better at those rules.